interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary, thematic, and fused. So there are many concepts used and commonly used by researchers uh, nowadays. However, all of those researchers, they are talking about, when they talk about curriculum integration, they talk about an approach which cut across different subject areas for teaching and learning through exploring real life issues or problems. So here we have the basic concept is cutting across different subject areas. That's the main theme of integration from the Western literature. Now, if we look at the different types of curriculum integration, there are different approaches to classify the different types of curriculum integration. This is one of these uh, types. Number one is what they call fusion. So if you are teaching a particular subject, you can draw from other disciplines or areas like ethics, like finance, like environment, and you can fuse, fuse some of the information into your subject, whether history or mathematics or what have you. That's one way of integrating the curriculum. The other way is what they call multidisciplinary. Multidisciplinary, where you talk about an event or an issue, and then you bring the different disciplines related to this issue. So in this case, we call it multidisciplinary. Still until now, we keep the boundaries of discipline intact. So we don't change or break the boundaries of different disciplines. Now the third one, interdisciplinary. We started to break the barriers, yet you find some sort of cross-section between the different disciplines. But in the last one, the transdisciplinary, there is no boundaries of subjects or disciplines, and you talk about themes only. Now, these are the commonly used in the Western literature. But having looked at these uh, verses in Surah Al-Kahf, I have come up with this definition of integrated curriculum. Um, the definition is like this. The integrated curriculum, based on Islamic worldview, is defined as the curriculum, when we talk about the curriculum, we talk about the different components. So we have to integrate not only the content, but also the learning outcomes, the activities, the resources, the teaching and learning, and the assessment. So when we talk about integration, we talk about all these components starting from the learning activities and ending up with assessment and going through the activities and teaching and learning assessment strategies. This curriculum, which connect relevant, revealed knowledge to recently acquired knowledge of the course. So now we are talking from our own perspective as Muslim, we would like to integrate revealed knowledge to acquire the knowledge. That is a bit, a bit different and unique to our own conception of integration. Of the course and real life issues, and that's what we talk and we'll find out in the Surah Al-Kahf, particularly in the story of Musa and Al-Khadr, he discussed three different real life issues. is the issue of the ship, and the, also the parents with the boy, and the other, th the third one is the village and the wall. So we have three real life issues in consistent manner. The process of integration might also require a connection to one or more relevant acquired knowledge discipline. Like in Surat Musa, in, sorry, in the story of Musa and Al-Khadr, we find political science, social sciences, 
we have economics, we have oceanography, we have physics. There are a lot of re relevant acquired knowledge could be embedded and integrated to the knowledge of self when and whenever it is possible and suitable. The integrated curriculum has to engage students' hearts, minds, act, and ethics in a practical and professional activities. So Musa and Al-Khadr, both of them, they were totally engaged, not in the classroom, but in the open air, in the field, in real life. So their hearts, their minds, their action, their akhlaq were also engaged in and outside the educational institution which achieve the course learning outcome and the benefits. And that's another unique aspect of Muslim integration, curriculum integration, is we have to rely on benefits. Because Musa and al Khazar, the, the, the teaching was taking place, yet they have solved the problem of the fish, uh, the chip, sorry, and also the problem of the parents and the problem of the orphans. So the teaching learning does not restrict itself into the teaching learning process, but also it go beyond to the community. So it goes, as I said, for students and their community in order to achieve success and prosperity in this life and the hereafter. Also another unique integration that we have to integrate our Iman and Akhirah in the curriculum, whatever the curriculum is. Now, let us just go through very quickly. I'm not going to reflect in front of you about what is the reflection and tadabbur of these verses from ayah number 60 to ayah number uh, 82. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the meaning of it in verse number 60 and mention when Moses said to his servant, I will not see traveling until I reach the junction of the two seas or continue for a long period. Now, the student is deciding about his learning outcomes. Also, he is ready to exert effort and to work really hard toward achieving his aims. But when they reached the junction between them, they forgot their fish and took course into the sea, slipping away. So now again, we have to admit that our students might suffer from forgetfulness because they are human beings and we have to be tolerant of this. So when they had passed beyond, Moses said to his boy, bring us our morning meal. We have certainly suffered in this journey. Now we are talking about being healthy and physically fit in order to be able to endure the efforts you are uh, 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 doing in order to learn. He said, did you see when we retired to the rock? Indeed, I forgot the fish, and none made me forget except the shaitan. Now we come to the concept of shaitan or Satan that I should mention it and it took its course into see amazingly. Now we are talking about again motivation, the word amazingly, and also the word, I mean the concept of Iman and Shaitan also, and you are including not only the mind but also the heart in your uh, teaching and learning process. Musa said that is what we were seeking. So, in fact, that's another. It's a self-check. It's an evaluation, continuous evaluation of uh, learning outcome. That's what we were seeking. So they retained following their photos that we are talking about now. Um, history as a social sciences and geography as well. And they found a servant from among our servants to whom we had given mercy from us and had taught him from us a certain knowledge. Now again, there is a, a, a conviction that all of us as teachers and students are, we are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the source of all knowledge is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our uh, belief system, Iman system, Iman um, uh, conviction that we have to inculcate and cultivate in our educational process. So there are many ways of integrating knowledge, reveal knowledge to the acquired knowledge. Also Moses said to him, may I follow you on the condition that you teach me from what you have been taught of South judgment. Now, it's very, very important. The student is very polite with the teacher. This is the character 
of a student towards his and respectful of his teacher. May I follow you? He's just su suggesting politely to his teacher if he is able to teach him. And also, uh, the word sound judgment, in fact, it's not the right word to use, but uh, in Arabic, uh, uh, So I would be guided in my life. So the main theme, the main goal of learning and teaching is to guide ourselves in this life, to succeed in this life and the hereafter. He said, indeed, with me, you will never be able to be patient. Now, there is a negotiation between student and teacher. This is uh, it's a, a healthy negotiation. They reach a consensus about what is the roles and responsibilities of both the teacher and the student, and what are the characteristics and the characters and the good ethics which they should have both in the process of education. And how can you have patience for what you do not encompass knowledge? Of course. And he has shown, analyzed the, the why you cannot be patient simply because of ignorance. So that's important of learning. Moses said, you will find me if Allah is patient and uh, patient and not disobey you. Um, sorry, sorry. Patient, I will not disobey you. Now, that's, again, because it is a very uh, close connection between the teacher and the student. The student were ready to follow the instruction of the teacher. He said, then, if you follow me, do not ask me about anything until I make you, I make to you about it mentioned. By the way, he did not say you don't ask me, but just he decided when to ask. He has given him challenging task to reflect and think that is the way of developing thinking but at the same time he has to wait and give him why to think wait to time to think about what he is posing to him from the events the practical real life issues to be posed to the students so they set out until when they had impact on the ship al khadr tore it open moses said have you torn it open to draw it People, you have certainly done a grave thing. Now, this is the first event. This is the, one of the main problems. So now he is uh, posing to uh, um, Musa a problem uh, to be solved and sorted out and to think about. Of course, it was beyond his imagination, beyond his, beyond his thinking. So he logically said, have you turned it to open down? He didn't know that there is a, a more in-depth knowledge. Uh, it is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is given and revealed to Al-Khadr. Al-Khadr said, did I not say that with me? You would never be able to have patience. Now, again, you can be tolerant of your student um, because they made mistakes. They tend to forget. And you have to be merciful and kind and caring teacher. Um, then, so they set out until when they meet a, a boy, Al Khadr killed him. Moses said, Have you killed a pure soul for other than having killed a soul? You have certainly done a, a deplorable thing. So the first one is what talked about the king and the poverty. Now, it's a political issue and also economic issue, but also the ship didn't sink because of physics anyway, the law of physics. So you have all the different natural science and those social sciences integrated into this, plus also the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Iman and Ibadah. Now this event, the other event, is killing the, the boy because he will do harm to his parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. Now we are integrating Allah's knowledge to um, um, the parenting, and family issues or social issues. Al-Khadr said, did I not tell you? Uh, because he told you, you have done a, certainly done a, a deplorable thing for his human knowledge. Did I not tell you that what with me, you would never be able to have patience? Again, three times, you have three times to reflect. Moses said, 
if I should ask you about anything after this, then do not keep me as a companion. And again, that also another thing in order to be successful in your teaching and learning, you have to have companionship between the teacher and the student. Companionship in the field, in the real life. Authentic, I would say authentic teaching and learning. Authentic issues. So education should be centered around authentic issues to solve the human needs in the society as well as involving characters in negotiation, discussion, dialogue, and effective and conducive environment for the learning. So you have obtained from me an excuse. And this is the uh, manners and the good manners of the student. He's admitting his mistakes and asking for, to apologize for his teacher. So ethics is an issue. Ethics is an issue in the integration of knowledge. So they set out until when they came to the people of town, they asked its people for food, but they refused to offer them hospitality. Now we are talking about another social issue also, um, and social problem, and they found they're in a wall about, collapse, about to collapse. Uh, so Al Khadr restored it. So they were very positive in helping the society and community engagement. Said, if you wish, you could have taken for it a payment. Now, this is a, a family problem, is an orphan problem, is an economic problem, social problem, but also it is Iman and Ibadah. Al Khadr said, this is parting between me and you. I will inform you of the interpretation of what you could. Now, the answer will come. All these questions raised by Musa as a student were answered and interpreted by uh, Al-Khadr alayhi salam. As for the ship, it belonged to poor, so that's economic problem. People working at the sea, so you can do about oceanography, so I intended to cause defect in it as there was after them a king. So he sorted out, he solved the problem by defect, by causing defect, and so that the political power would never seize the, uh, the, the ship by force from the poor people. And as for the boy, his parents were believers. Now we are coming to integrating Iman and social issues or parenting. And we feared that he would overburden them by transgression and display. As you could see, we can see all the different types of um, uh, Islamic issues integrated in the story. So we intended that the Lord should substitute for them on a better than him. So that, so we are talking about the mercy of Allah, we are talking about the knowledge of Allah, we are talking about caring of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are talking about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have to integrate such kind of attributes in our education or curriculum. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city, and there was beneath it a treasure for them, and their father had been righteous. So your Lord intended that they reach maturity and extract their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. Now again, we are talking about attributes of Allah Ta'ala, we are talking about Iman and Ibadah, and that Allah has given us, Tashkhir, has given us everything in this life to utilize in order to construct this life and also succeed in the hereafter. That is the interpretation of that about which you could not have patience. Now this is a complete integration. You cannot find it anywhere else. Now let me just dwell a little bit, very quickly, about the, some of the inferences relevant to uh, curriculum integration from this story. First, the importance of teacher and student characters. Good character and the ethics. So we have to integrate characters and ethics. Number two, success in this life and the here. So we have to integrate whatever we have um, in, 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 uh, about dunya and akhirah. We have to integrate both to be successful in this dunya and the akhirah. Also, we have to have a shared understanding about learning outcomes, teaching and learning strategies, and assessment between the teacher and the It means that is the integration of shared components of curriculum between teacher and students. What is the role? We are talking about the role of both in the process of curriculum. The learning outcomes were clear for both. So the clarity 
from the beginning, from the very beginning. In fact, the initiative was taken by the student. He was asking for certain learning outcome to be achieved. And the teacher responded positively to him to teach him. So here we can see that there is a clarity of learning outcomes between both the student and teacher. Also, the design of the real life issues. As you can see, it should be challenging to student thinking. That's what happened to Al Khadr. He designed, according to Allah's will, three different events, real life issues. And it was challenging. It was challenging for Musa and sorted out at the end of the day and achieved the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to understand and learn effectively, we need to cut across relevant human main discipline boundaries. So we have a lot of relevant information to different disciplines in this uh, story. As I said, there are a lot, legal system, political system, economy, social system, parenting, family, society, community, whatever. Iman, Akhirah, and so on. Students have to be actively engaged. So you can see the continuous communication between Musa and Al-Khadr in a very healthy and positive manner. Also, the curriculum design should integrate holistically the student personality. So we cultivate in this story the heart, the mind, the action, and the benefits for the society and the students for both the student teacher because they were working together as a team. Now, also, if we are talking about this, this is my model which I have uh, um, inferred from the Quran. So, heart is involved because our Iman is part of our heart. Mind, challenging thinking. Action, they were doing and solving the problem. And benefits, benefits for the student he learned and also for the community to solve the political problem, the social problem and parenting problem. Also, as you could see, that there is a connection between Iman, Ibadah, Tasteer, uh, Tawheed, uh, tributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, belief system to all the different knowledge so that we can guide our students to succeed in this life and in the hereafter. All issues are connected mainly to Allah and His will. Hence, the attribute of Allah has to be integrated as well. Also, the story tackled issues of individual, family, society, and all its real manifestation and aspect. And that is um, the, 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 the main goal of Islam. We are not looking for Muslim individual, but Muslim families and Muslim societies. That's the main, uh, and, uh, the main theme of Islam. It's a social religion in the first place. Uh, all maqasid, you can find the five maqasid, we talk about maqasid and sharia, are involved in this story. So, intellect, there was challenging and thinking to develop knowledge and thinking. Religion, discussion of how to be guided in life and to be related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and iman. And also health and safety. So we talked about how to be healthy by preparing the food and everything. And also... Uh, the family, so we discuss issues of families like parenting and orphan and so on. And finally, the wealth, because we were talking about economic problem on the ship and wealth development protecting the, uh, the poor people. So we have also to integrate maqasid to our curriculum in whenever it is sortable and possible. We cannot involve everything in one topic. But what I'm saying now, I'm discussing the, the potential areas of integration. So the uh, curriculum developers should know how to integrate each sub, uh, I mean, uh, aspect in its right place. So, Iman and Ubudiyya had to be integrated. Ibadah, Akhlaq, Tazkiyah, that purification, ethics, worship, Tashkir, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for us, I'mar, construction of this life, and Tawheed also should be integrated. Um, now, also social science, natural science, you can see in the story that both social science and natural science were integrated in the story here. Uh, knowledge, skills, and emotion of both the teacher and the student have to be actively engaged. That we talked about the model of effective teaching and learning where 
we think that heart, mind, and action and akhlaq should be engaged both for teacher and student. The knowledge of the different relevant disciplines, as I said, authentic, I would use authentic integration because we are discussing real life issues, we are discussing um, uh, Iman and Akhlaq from revealed knowledge, so all authentic. Also the teaching and learning taking place in real life, so authentic. So we're talking about authentic integration. <laughs> and the unique in Islam is achieving benefits, not only for the student alone, but for the community. As you could see in this uh, uh, verses, we discussed the solutions for societal problems faced in the ship and the village and on the, uh, on the community, in the community. Now, this is the final point I would like to come to, is what I have come to discuss the authentic, we start with authentic real life. In order to design an integrated curriculum, you start with authentic real life issues or topics or problems. That's number one. So I would call upon all the brothers and sisters, if they want to develop a new curriculum or a unit or whatever, and I would like them to encourage them to start doing and adopting this model in order to see the impact of developing curriculum on the basis of this model to uh, implement it and see the impact of it on student understanding, um, knowledge, uh, solving problems, attitudes and so on and so forth. So we start with authentic real life, then we design the program or the curriculum by adopting the integration which take takes the following forms of integration. What are the forms of integration? So bear with me just to discuss very quickly these few um, or several aspects of integration. Number one, integrating shared teaching, learning, and assessment by both students and teachers. So when we develop the curriculum, we have to have shared understanding regarding learning outcomes, assessment, and so on between the student and teachers. Second, integrating holistic personality. Integrating in holistic person, because we want to develop not only the mind, as the West are telling us, we want to develop the heart, we want to develop Iman and Akhlaq, we want to develop um, uh, uh, righteous deeds, and we have to, 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 to help the student to be more effective, more positive, and play the role in their own local society or local community. So integrating holistic personality of both student and teachers, heart, mind, ethics, saying, action, benefit to individuals, families, community, and humanity. That kind is a very big aspect of integration in order to take into account. When you write a curriculum, you have to take into account that you are developing human beings, not only his thinking or um, his feeling or his action, but everything. Then integrating what is relevant to Iman and Allah's attribute. So whenever possible, we can fuse our part of Iman and belief system and Asma Allah al husna in what we, have, what we are writing. Then integrating relevant revealed knowledge to real life issues. Now we can quote verses or hadith relevant to what we are discussing. That's another aspect of integration. Integrating whatever possible from maqasid. Again, as I said, because we want to live up to the maqasid, the ultimate goals of, uh, of Islam, is we have to infuse again and integrate maqasid issues in whatever we write. Integrating the relevant knowledge from the different acquired disciplines. Also, since we are discussing real life issues, we have to draw some knowledge and information from all possible social sciences and natural sciences, which help us to understand better the real life issues or problems. Integrating life issues to the hereafter. Also here, what is important that we have to pre prepare people to be successful in this life and the hereafter. So hereafter should be integrated. Integrating knowledge to its application, which leads to realizing human benefit. So we have to 
be also a practical approach. Action learning is very important. Hands-on learning, experiential learning. So we have to have hands-on activities in our, um, uh, in our curriculum. Students should do something real in, uh, in, 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 in life. Integrating the relevant ethics, again, akhlaq, for both, not only for the student, for both the student, student teacher. Now, that's the, the good thing about um, the authentic uh, integration in Islam. They don't discuss only the role of the student or the teacher. No, not only learning, but both learning and teaching. We need both. They have to be good example for both. Um, once we integrate uh, the curriculum and take into account all these different aspects of integration, then we can teach it by adopting authentic teaching and learning um, to develop the holistic personalities of our students to help their own themselves and community needs and aspirations. By doing so, what they can do is we realize the benefit for individuals, families, societies, that is local communities and humanity. That achieving the benefit or the maqasid for everybody in life. As you could see now, now these are some of the aspects drawn from these verses, how to integrate um, our curriculum from based on this Quranic model. But I have to say that this only one model, one model from one group of verses. I'm sure all of you can read the Quran and also as, uh, events from the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu and you can develop other models of integrated curriculum. Islamic integration of curriculum has ultimate goals. It go beyond learning by students, but it goes to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enhance Iman, as well as emphasize ethics and the benefits for students, families, and the community. That's a different approach from the current integration of curriculum in the world today. Also, we discuss the importance of impact. Impact is meaning the local community. On, so we have not only to teach our students, but also to solve community problems. And we have to adopt, as I said, the teacher learning authentic um, um, uh, styles because we are discussing real life context. We are trying to reflect needs of society. So, and also we have to, as I said, which is different from the Western literature, we activate the heart, the mind, the akhlaq, and the actions to realize benefit is a different way of conceptualization of teaching and learning in, from an Islamic perspective. Um, so we uh, would like others also to generate more models which could be useful for us to design cur our curriculum in school and university. Thank you very much. Can you hear us now, Prof? Still you cannot hear. Is Habib Smoke? Which is my Habib? SRA. Prof is uh, moving to a new account. We we'll wait for a while. Okay. Salam alaikum. Salam. Okay, bro. Now you are okay. Okay, I can use the other computer to uh, interact with you. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll mute you on the other one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, bro. SRA US. Yes, we got it. We got it. US Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, alhamdulillah, uh, this is just an introduction, uh, one out of seven lectures that uh, Prof. Uh, yeah. Dawood will, will deliver to us. Uh, in fact, we have been talking about these online courses. Uh,
we have been talking about this online courses for the past three months before yeah. the COVID-19. So Prof. Yeah. Uh, Daud and Prof. Uh, Jamal Badi and Prof. Munjit is one of our uh, assigned speakers uh, to speak with us. For this topic, he has, has, has proposed to us last three months. So he will go over all this topic, inshallah. So uh, we will invite brothers to ask direct question. Uh, Prof. now is using a different laptop. You can see him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have Prof. Ismail Gaya and Baker. I can. I, you can unmute yourself, or I'll unmute you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Waalaikumsalam wa rahmatullah. Professor Daoud, thank you so much for the excellent uh, lecture which was really done in time, but very comprehensive. Uh, now, my question is, you know, many of us are struggling with integration of knowledge and mashallah have given us a good way of uh, how we can try to integrate it. Uh, how do we train our teachers to really start thinking in these terms? Because many of them have been uh, uh, trained in the Western mode of, uh, uh, of delivering information, but now they need to, uh, 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 they need to do the IOK. How, what's the best way of uh, orienting them to this kind of uh, teaching? Yes, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, your uh, questions. Um, in fact, we all studied in the West and we learn from the Western uh, scholars, but we found during our study, they are very limited. They are very limited. And we found out that uh, what we have is a lot better and we can accommodate what is good, what they are offering to us, to our most authentic knowledge. So uh, first of all, we have, to boost um, our, um, our self-confidence in our Iman and in what we have. Unfortunately, our own people, they were not exposed to the Islamic knowledge. And also they don't have the tools of how to understand Islamic knowledge, I mean revealed knowledge. So you, we cannot demand from them as something they cannot do. So first of all, we as professors and lecturers at the universities, we have to know our deen, our knowledge, and how to make it relevant to the discipline of education. From my own perspective, it is quite easy. It's quite easy, but we have to work together as professors and lecturers to work together and to share knowledge among ourselves like what we are doing today. Then once we have, then we can orient our own student and also uh, juniors, uh, but gradually, gradually because they don't have any knowledge. All they have, only the Western knowledge. So they study textbook from the West, they use English, they don't understand Arabic and so on. So we cannot demand something they don't know about it. So we have to be wise in introducing them in a very motivating way to uh, Islam in relation to education. I'm not talking about introducing them to Salah or Zakah or Hajj and so on. I'm talking about how to make our revealed knowledge relevant to education. And from my own point of view, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the best educator. So um, he was not a scientist, but educator. So it's a good opportunity as educationists to learn from this educator, whether in Quran and Sunnah. Um, so let us first, among ourselves, share knowledge. Second, start introducing those people to Islamic knowledge related to education in a very wise and motivating manner. 
then slowly inshallah they will bite in they will own it and they will then be confident to deliver it to others yeah that is said by abu sairi now next thank you uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin we thank uh, prof daud for the presentation i want to ask prof that in trying to do integration of knowledge particularly integration of islamic knowledge with social sciences if we are conducting research there's a possibility of looking at some of the uh, problems in social sciences and using islamic knowledge to adjust those problems there's a possibility of saying looking for a synergy between islamic knowledge and social sciences now if i'm conducting a research do i have to say islamic perspective on social science on sociology for example or i say a synergy between or what sociology has to say about islam there is a problem among researchers of how do we arrange these terminologies do i say islamic knowledge, islamic perspective on sociology or what sociology says about islam or synergy between islamic knowledge and sociology so how to really arrange it because some scholars felt that no islam has remained the knowledge is ulumul uh, wahi so we cannot say um, what islam has to say about sociology but what sociology says about islam. so how do we arrange this terminology in going forward in research of uh, integration of knowledge thank you okay brother um, thank you for the question uh, first of all those people who say this is sociology has nothing to do with ulum al wah because this is a revealed knowledge this is not revealed knowledge um, maybe out of fear out of fear but let me just look at the quran does quran talk about sociology if you are talking about sociology as a discipline man made discipline but let us talk about the very basic assumption of sociology that is interaction okay interaction now two third of the quran i think is talking about social interaction social interaction now if we start studying thoroughly the quran and the sunnah how the prophet conducted his life in the family for instance that's part of the sociology of the family how he conducted that how he conducted in the community so let's go back to the basics of sociology forget about the basic definition from the western literature i'm talking about let us discuss and come up with our own definition with our own definition so maybe we have to go more in depth in order to know don't talk just about the word sociology but talk about social phenomenon what are the categorization of social phenomenon whether the quran sunnah has talked about this how can we make the connection islam came as a social religion to organize and organize our social life whether with our neighbors with our families with our uh, brothers and sisters in this community whether in the mosque in the, in, 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 in war any, anywhere so that's all sociology so we might come up with a different categorization and definition and areas of studies so if we can get some of the things from the western literature why not if it is for instance i'll just give you an example if um, we say uh, is people are deterministic should we adopt the, de the deterministic perspective of sociology or the sociology of the possible now we are doing the basic of qadr and freedom so in, we need more thinking i think and one person alone cannot do the job we have to form uh, you know teams teams of researchers so that we can support each other in order to understand better the phenomena the social phenomena 
Now, if there is a research, we just go back and do the literature review from the Western perspective. And Alhamdulillah, I would like to tell you there are a lot of books about Muslim sociology. They have already started writing for the last 50 years, many Muslims. Not many, but not many Muslims have taken that. But if you go back to the Muslim historical times and era, we'll find a lot of writing about specific social issues in the different books, because there were not a book called sociology, psychology, and so on. But in the, the Muslim writing, whether in psychology and sociology, there are a lot of information relevant to the different issues and topics of sociology nowadays. So let us again work together. So those people who are working in sociology or in psychology or in education, let us work together. That's the only way. Teamwork is the best way to do research and to develop knowledge and generate knowledge. But if we follow up only the track of the Western literature, will never come to an end. Oh, there's Thank one you. question from Sister Zohara Gulami. She asked, um, uh, in non-Islamic countries where we have a national curriculum, how can this integration be implemented? Well, I can, I can, give, I can give her some experiences. I mean, in the West mainly, uh, at least in Britain where I lived, uh, for nine years, we used to have our own extracurricular activities, either in the evening or in the weekend or in the summer. So we have to work together as Muslim community to develop materials, educational materials for students in a very motivating force. So it's a kind of entertainment and uh, something which appealing to our kids. So for instance, I'll just give you an example. Yesterday, one of my PhD students has written or developed a unit in nutrition. And she has integrated Islamic perspective in the nutrition for grade uh, six, that is 12 years old. Now I can take that kind of activities and add it as extracurricular activity to our children, for the Muslim children. So they can have it of school hours. So let us again work together in the non-Muslim countries where Muslim are minorities to develop materials as an extra supplementary educational material for our children so that they don't miss the concept of integrating and developing holistic personality as Muslim kids. Okay, Prof. Um, we will print out all of these questions uh, on the chat and we will forward it to you. Maybe next session you can spend five, seven minutes like this okay. question and answer it. Yeah. So okay. before we leave, we will invite you for two, three minutes, Prof. A last word for today's session. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy that uh, I have met all those brothers and sisters who are keen to share with me uh, what I have arrived at. It is my own effort and I'm sure, and I would like all the brothers and sisters to work together so we can uh, through um, this platform of Triple IT um, to work together to do some um, research agenda and uh, help each other and maybe uh, whether in supervising developing materials or textbooks or whatever, and I'm sure Triple IT will be very happy to help us in this respect. Jazakumullahu khairan. Thank you so much, Prof. I think your message is very loud and clear that we have to work together. We have yes. to help uh, each other, inshallah. So we'll see everyone again tonight at nine o'clock on sociology and anthropology. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.